Hare Krishna and sincere greetings to everyone tuned to Sadhana. I am Alisha Gaye Prasad, keeping you entertained with the varieties Hinduism has to offer right here on S3. Start your engine of enjoyment as we bring to you an insightful view of the famous Hare Krishna temple in Chatsworth. Picking up the pace, our yoga instructor Duncan Rice shows us the benefits of yoga, especially for pain relief. Bringing sadhana to our end point, we get underway with really important survival tips, our Go Green mini-series. Placing the bustling suburb of Chatsworth on the global tourist map is the renowned Sri Sri Radha Radhanath Temple of Understanding. Did you know that the Hare Krishna temple, as most of us know it to be, was designed in the shape of a lotus plant? My visit to this remarkable temple has been nothing but delightful. Hindu temple architecture reflects a synthesis of arts, the ideals of dharma, the values and the way of life cherished under Hinduism. A temple is a place of worship, a place for Tirtha which is pilgrimage. Today I'm standing at one of the major tourist destinations in Durban, the Hare Krishna temple. And I'm going to be sitting in conversation with Smita Krishna Prabhu, who's going to tell us how this temple came to be. This temple is mind-blowing. From a bird's eye view, you can see that the structure of this temple is in the shape of a lotus. I'm curious to know more about this and what was the inspiration behind it? This is a, a very auspicious flower and described in the Vedic scriptures. Chapter 5 of Bhagavad Gita specifically describes the lotus as a, a metaphor for a self-realized soul. When you look at the lotus flower, the lotus grows in muddy waters but still it is untouched by the muddy waters. Yes. Water just rolls off so similarly, a self-realized soul, a person who is practicing spiritual life, is uh, unaffected by the miseries of the material nature. And therefore the lotus is a very, very uh, significant uh, metaphor to understand. And itself, as a flower, it is also uh, a very pure flower, and therefore mm -hmm. that also represents purity. Mm -hmm. The temple itself is constructed according to uh, principles, architectural principles described in the Vedas and that is okay. called Vastu. Yes. So the full name is Vastu Purusha Mandala okay. and uh, people may be familiar with uh, Feng Shui, the Chinese art of directions, but the original teachings about directions of buildings and alignment of buildings comes from Vastu. Mm -hmm. So the temple itself is uh, octagonal and the dimensions of the temple are in proportion to the body of the spiritual master. So Srila Prabhupada from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger is called a cubit. So proportionately so many cubits the temple is okay. built. So these are very important aspects of uh, Vastu and spiritual principles that went into the construction of the temple. Even in the temple and surroundings the temple has four gates and each of those gates represent an age which is known as the Yuga. Mm -hmm. So you have the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, Dwarpa Yuga and the Kali Yuga. So each of the gates. The temple alignment is also east-west and uh, when you look at the altar then the altar behind the altar is the east and the entrance in the temple is on the western side. So these are very significant principles. So the, the single tall dome has on top of it a chakra and when you see that, that is the dome that is over the altar mm -hmm. and that indicates it's a temple of Krishna because of the chakra. Okay. Then the traditional are the domes. Then you have the contemporary. If you walk around the temple, you will see that uh, the office type of block, the long windows around there. So it's very contemporary. And then the futuristic is the cantilevered stainless steel dome. There's no other building in the world. Mm -hmm. it's, and at least we know in the southern hemisphere, there's no other building wow. with stainless steel, all of which have been produced here locally. So within the temple, as I said, it's octagonal. So there are eight plates uh, on the ceiling, which are depictions of the pastimes of Krishna. So when Krishna was here in the planet, the Supreme Lord performed many pastimes. So those pastimes are then have been 
drawn by artists, Srila Prabhupada's disciples drew them and he personally instructed them about the artwork. Okay. And uh, we have the understanding that Srila Prabhupada had the spiritual vision to understand and therefore he was able to uh, direct his artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are referred to as the windows to the spiritual world. Along with the impressive structure and design of the temple, this temple offers a delectable vegetarian cuisine for locals and tourists. Well, that's been commended quite often. Uh, vegetarianism is a very important aspect of spiritual practice and it behoves those, irrespective of whatever religion they belong to, at some stage to understand that a vegetarian cuisine is aligned with tolerance and compassion. In your opinion, Prabhu, how does this home of the Lord serve the devotees? Well, it serves a bigger community. You know, uh, the institute, the, the name Sri Sri Radha Radha Temple of Understanding means that it is an educational institute. Foremost, it is because from here we're disseminating that spiritual knowledge that will help the living entity, mm -hmm. the spirit soul who's traversing in this world, in our communities, to understand his or her higher purpose. And that is to ultimately to move, transcend beyond the material nature and achieve the ultimate success of life and that is to go back to where we all come from, the mm -hmm. spiritual world. A unique feature of this temple is the moat that surrounds it. What was the intention here? The moat around the temple is a very beautiful feature and uh, it represents the material nature. And if you look, when you come to the temple, there's a drawbridge that goes over the moat. Mm -hmm. So you're leaving the material world behind. You're crossing the ocean of material existence mm -hmm. into the spiritual dimension. And that's, that's the, totally significant. Yes, right. yes, indeed it is. So the, you know, the architects, they were very, very astute in how they created this temple. Mm -hmm.